This is the White Coat Investor Podcast, Milestones to Millionaire, celebrating stories of success along the journey to financial freedom. Here is your host, Dr. Jim Dolly. This is Milestones to Millionaire, podcast number 31, The Millionaire Dentist. Did you know that since 2011, GoodRx has helped Americans save approximately $30 billion on their prescription costs? That's a lot of money saved. But GoodRx is about much more than saving people money. GoodRx also helps people afford and adhere to the treatment plans their doctors prescribe. In fact, by lowering out-of-pocket medication costs, GoodRx estimated it has helped patients get at least 78 million prescriptions they otherwise may not have been able to afford. That increased level of adherence, thanks to GoodRx, leads directly to better health outcomes. So I recommend GoodRx and help your patients save up to 80% on their prescriptions so they can afford, start, and stay on their treatment. Learn more at GoodRx.com WCI. All right, we've got a great interview for you today. Let's get our guest on the phone and talk about him and his uh, recent milestone. All right, we have Dr. X on the phone today. Uh, welcome to the Milestones to Millionaire podcast. Well, thank you very much. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you so much for everything you do for all of us out there uh, in the medical profession. And, um, you know, I kind of have to say, I, I really wish we had a uh, service like the White Coat Investor when I first started. Yeah, me too, now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, we have some similarities in that when I first started, you know, I ran into a lot of problems with, I, I didn't have the right help coming out. And I, I decided to defer all my investments to um, financial advisors that later on I found out were really just salesmen. And uh, I'm not saying there aren't good ones, because I know there's quite a few good ones. But it's just a matter of finding the right one. And uh, I just wish it happened a lot sooner. Yeah, for sure. Well, today we're here to talk about your accomplishment, use it to inspire others to hopefully do the same. So tell us uh, just a little bit about yourself. What's your specialty? What do you do? And how far are you out of training? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm a general dentist. I graduated in 91. And so I've been out for a while. Uh, In 92, I did a GPR. It allowed me to move down from Illinois to Florida. And I I didn't even realize at the time, I just wanted to move to a warmer climate. But that in itself probably saved us quite a billion or uh, quite quite a bit of money throughout the years. And mainly in taxes, since we don't have a state tax, they do collect it in other ways, but it's, it's not anything like it would be living up in Illinois or Chicago area. And what's your approximate net worth at this point? Right now, it's between six. 0.7 0.7 to 7 million. And what, what's that divided up into? Sure. Yeah, I've got uh, about 5.4, what we probably refer to as liquid. And the home's anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5. Could be more than that. I, I just don't know for sure. You know, to break it all down, and it gets kind of complicated when you look at what I've got. Uh, and there's a specific reason I can go into all that later. But um, I've got a Schwab account. And that's our retirement account, which is IRAs. And I got about 1.75 in that. Um, When you look at our tax managed accounts, we've got two. One's at Vanguard, and it's about $2 million in that. And then Fidelity is 1.56. So we also have a little HSA, and that's about 91, or uh, yeah, I think $91,000 of that. You got your money spread around the three big ones anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a reason for everything. And part of it has to do with, you know, in the past, when I first started, we had advisors, and it, it might have been with, you know, I won't name the companies, but for a long time, we just didn't earn much. And it probably was about 08. I looked at, uh, you know, what we had, and it was probably under 300,000. And at that time, I kept hearing you need three million to retire. It, it, somebody gave me the advice that you don't want to count on your practice, which we own our own practice. We owned our own building, uh, but I didn't want to conclude any of that. So I thought, well, how the heck am I going to get that much money? Um, and it seems like you know I'd put money into it and it just evaporate. And obviously, that was in the fees for poor choices for investments. And what I mean is, they're selling product. And of course, at the time, 
the S&P wasn't doing that great. It was kind of a flat 10 years. So I decided to learn on my own. There was a, a dental educator, and he came up. Uh, uh, I would talk to him periodically, and he and, you know, mentioned Paul Merriman. So I went to his website, looked at some of his information, and you know, I just took over from there. Uh, I mean, he kind of broke it down and made it simple where he had his ultimate buy and hold portfolio. And you know, I just went all in into that. I, uh, I just aggressively started saving. And from then on, I mean, I, it was $80,000 a year, $100,000 a year. I just, whether it's uh, uh, the pre-tax wasn't much. All we had was an IRA. And I know a lot of, a lot of listeners have 401ks, but with my age and my staff's age, I just wasn't able to swing it. Um, so we just relied on the IRA to to uh, invest pre-tax and everything else was after tax. And that was a big chunk of what I saved. That's why the Vanguard account was so large while the Schwab, who we had an advisor and, uh, you know, he started putting into that. We did switch advisors eventually and, and he's pretty good at it, uh, you know, and he helped us out quite a bit. Now, this is this is a pretty interesting story where you came out in 91, didn't really acquire much wealth for the first 17 years. Then over the last 13, you, you've basically gone hog wild. Now, when did you when did you own your start owning your practice? Yeah, well, I, you know, as far as uh, hog wild, I, I get obsessive about things. So, yeah, uh, you know, I didn't buy the practice till 96. And my wife helped me run it. She graduated with me and she was a pharmacist. She quit her job to help me at the office. And uh, I've got to say, out of all the choices I ever made, that was probably the best choice. And, uh, you know, she, she's been with me. She helped me run it. She helped me build it. And um, a- anyhow, so, you know, one of the things I would spend money on is instead of blowing it on a boat or a plane or something, you know, we buy a house, pay it off. We bought a farm, paid it off. And, you know, none of them were cheap. They were pretty expensive. So we would do things like that. And, um, you know, buy it. If we bought a car, we'd pay it off. So I never had any debt. We were just very debt averse. So, uh, you know, it, it's something that if, if I knew I can count on investing and make money off it eventually, you know, I would have done that. But at the time, until I found that I could do it myself, that I come up with pretty decent results. And of course, the past 10, 12 years has really helped because it's been a pretty much full market, except for last year. Um, you know, just probably would have never happened. So what's what's been your range of income throughout your career? Yeah, that's funny. The first year, I think I earned uh, $35,000. The last year, Somewhere in the 500s. And I never really look at how much I earn. I kind of look at how much do I get to save. And, you know, the last, well, let's take 2020, I probably saved 300,000. And uh, in 19, it was 220. 18, uh, about 180. Same thing with 17. You know, so I've really been able to put away, even this year was so far. To date, one hundred thirty thousand. That's pre and post tax, which most of it is after tax. So, um, now, now you sound pretty debt averse. How uh, how much debt do you currently have? Oh no, yeah, none at all. No. Practice is paid off, house is paid off, the farm is paid off, everything's paid off. Yeah, I've been debt free four times, and basically, you <laughs> buy something expensive and it paid off. Now, what had also happened was uh, with the farm, we had bought that at the peak of the market back in 03, 04. And then we sold it at the bottom. It was funny. Within a month, we sold our house. We sold the farm and we bought uh, five acres on the river in uh, in uh, Florida. So, uh, you know, we just kind of swapped everything out. I never really liked debt. Um, you know, it just kept us out of trouble. and uh, And really it allowed me to sleep at night. That's always the biggest concern for me, owing people, owing other, uh, you know, others money. 
So what advice do you have somebody that's where you were a decade or two ago? Let's say they're a mid-career doc and they kind of look around and realize they're really not accumulating wealth very quickly, but they want to. They want to be financially successful like you've been. What advice do you have for that person? Well, first thing is set goals. And I, you know, I've been setting goals for a long time. And it's really in this case, we're talking financial, of course. You know, what's your end goal gonna look at look like? Excuse me. When do you want to retire with how much? You know, you kind of figure out how much you need and then just go from there. And whatever you think you want to save, I always bump it up a little bit more. Uh, I mean, you could do a third, a third, a third, which is, you know, a third towards uh, your your expenses, a third towards taxes, or a third towards investing. But in this particular case, you know, if, if you're a big career, you got the funds, uh, I just dedicate 40, 50% and uh, try to get it, try to get it up there as soon as you can. Because, uh, you know, as they say, the first million is always the hardest. And you know, before you know it, two million came, and uh, and then uh, there's something I left out, uh, and that's when you want to retire. And you know, I decided last year I wanted to retire. Had nothing to do with the year. Actually, it was a fabulous year for us. We produced quite a bit, but uh, 2019, right about that time, I was getting kind of burned out. And I was just ready for a change. So we sold it uh, in March of this year. And uh, by the time I got done and ready to sell it, we had about 3.7 in investments. And uh, we just bumped it up after that, you know, after the sale, of course. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your success. It's a really inspiring story. And I know others will uh, take some great lessons from it and apply it in their own lines, in their own lives, excuse me. And thank you so much for coming on the Milestones to Millionaire podcast. Sure. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Uh, A lot of good takeaways there. Somebody who was not getting carried away with debt um, and probably most importantly, decided to own his practice, which makes a huge difference. When you own it, everything extra comes to you rather than whoever else owns the practice. You know, there's always a cap on your income if you're an employee, not the case if you are an owner. I think that savings rate is also a big part of their success story as well. Do you know how many of your patients can actually afford their prescriptions? It might be fewer than you think. A recent poll revealed that three in 10 adults in the U.S. reported not taking their medications as prescribed because of cost. GoodRx can help bring those numbers down with your help. Order a free savings kit for your office. It's filled with savings cards that can work at over 70,000 U.S. pharmacy locations and never expire. Using these cards can help your patients save up to 80% on their prescriptions. When your patients can afford their prescriptions, they're more likely to stick to the medication regimen you prescribe for them. To get your GoodRx savings kit, visit goodrx.com slash WCI. If you'd like to come on the White Coat Investor, or rather the Milestones to Millionaire podcast, go to whitecoatinvestor.com slash milestones, and you can apply to be a guest there and celebrate with us your financial milestones and use them to inspire others to do the same. Until then, keep your head up, shoulders back. You've got this and we can help. And we'll see you next time on the podcast. My dad, your host, Dr. Dahl, is a practicing emergency physician, blogger, author, and podcaster. He is not a licensed accountant, attorney, or financial advisor. So this podcast is for your entertainment and information only and should not be considered official, personalized financial advice.